One thing that's amazing about Lone Star Ticks is how they can take advantage of ideal habitat and climate and host factors. And when all the conditions are right, the Lone Star Tick populations explode. And we end up with something that entomologists refer to as a tick bloom. To veterinarians and to dogs and cats, it seems more like a tick swarm. And when the Lone Star Ticks are swarming, you know it because there's literally thousands of them present and in the environment and creating a risk of infestation to us and to our pets. Lone Star Ticks are also gregarious in that we find them in high numbers when they're swarming, but they're much more aggressive or assertive ticks. Um, they'll actually hunt their hosts rather than um, just passively wait for them. And so we'll see them, when they quest, they'll run towards a host. They'll actively seek out a host. Well, Lone Star Ticks transmit a number of different diseases to people and pets, including ehrlichiosis, um, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever in some cases, and cytozoonosis, which is a fatal tick-borne disease of cats. Lone Star Ticks really prefer wooded areas, and so we often find them where there's trees and understory and places that'll protect them from desiccation. They won't be in open pastures or manicured lawns, but they'll certainly be anywhere there's edge habitat. Lone Star Ticks have dramatically expanded their range in the last few decades. Historically, they were a southern tick, but they've really expanded now to areas like southern Wisconsin, southern Maine, southern Ontario, and so they're southern no more. We consider them as present in most of the eastern two-thirds of North America. Lone Star Tick activity will start as soon as things start to warm up, so sometimes in February um, we'll start to get adult Lone Star Tick activity. And if we don't have dogs on tick control at that point in time, there's nothing protecting them from that swarm. So it's really critical that they be protected before the Lone Star Tick numbers peak. There's great information about the different ticks and their habitats and how to identify them on the CAPSI website at capsivet.org.